Right now, uh, you know, we live in very difficult times with uh, circumstances that change daily, if not hourly. Uh, we've been working very hard to um, protect the town of Hadley as best we can. That means getting daily messages out. If people have any concerns, they should go to www.hadleyma.org. And there is a daily situational report uh, that uh, tells you what we're doing and, and what steps are, are um, being contemplated, what resources are available. Uh, and so we hope that you find that uh, very helpful. Right now, we have an annual town meeting, which is scheduled for May 7th. Um, we could push that back to June 30th on our own. There is legislation being proposed today that would uh, give us additional flexibility in our timing. And we could actually have town meeting, if this legislation is passed in its present form, we could have town meeting sometime after July 1st, which is the beginning of the fiscal year. If we do ch choose to take that, uh, that option, uh, the pending legislation includes all sorts of fix-its for the financials so that we could continue spending uh, without appropriation. We could meet uh, our first one month uh, obligations in terms of debt service, one-time payments, et cetera. Um, they're also talking about other kinds of relief which may affect our cash flow. Very fluid situation, a lot of this stuff is pending so we'll we'll report what the final report uh, form is uh, right now for the annual elections the select board has pushed that back from april 12th to may uh, april 14th to may 12th uh, and there may be some additional adjustment to do it on a saturday that would be uh, may 16th and the reasons for that is that uh, we, um, we've closed school for so long that if we needed to close school again for an, an election, I think people would be very upset and concerned. Um, so that's where we are. We're here with Chris Okafor to talk about the public safety, but uh, yeah. public works budget, which starts on page 67. If you don't happen to have a book with you, you can go to www.hadleyma.org, go to the administrator's page, and there's the preliminary uh, uh, budget book to be uh, uh, downloaded. So Chris, I believe the floor is yours, unless Amy, you have something that you would like to talk about. Not at this time, I say let's let Chris take it away. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to come before the committee. Again, my name is Chris Okafor. I, I'm coming to the committee. I don't know if the committee want to start with the capital budget or the operational budget. Uh, we will follow you. You start wherever you want and we'll follow you. Oh, okay. I, I, let me, I like to deal with the capital. Okay. Um, the... Um, the capital budget, I um, I'll break I'll break them down into um, divisions: highway division, uh, wastewater division, water division, and building building maintenance. And they, oh, Chris, and they can, have, I, can I just interrupt you and just uh, direct the finance committee's attention to not the budget book, but okay. the annual town meeting warrant that's where the capital okay. article will be okay all right go ahead chris yes so the capital budget um request we have a um, couple of items there some of them we we brought before the com uh, the committee for the last uh, fall time meeting um some of them we uh, put into um Debt exclusion, mm -hmm. and uh, and they were all voted down. So at this time, we are urging the committee to please, in the, in deliberating for DPW, uh, even if we are not we are not able to get approval from the committee, 
we would prefer not to go to debt exclusion. Uh, the experience we had last fall, we felt um, the public have a right to do what it did, but I don't know if most of those things were done based on um, actuality or based on different uh, other issues, which is bigger than public works. So this time around, we we have the more for 30,000. Um, this equipment, uh, at the time we presented this equipment in the four-time meeting, it was uh, a little bit uh, very vital for us, but now it's becoming very more vital. Um, we have the town commons, which is a big space for us to maintain. And uh, recently, the, recently, the select board has added to us the Zataka Park to maintain. And uh, we have, um, we need this more to maintain these uh, two big um, important locations in town. We, the more we have right now is, uh, we, is already out, outdated in terms of age and is costing more to fix. And so if we are not able to get a more to maintain the park, our feeling is that uh, DPW can take care of the parks, especially both um, the commons and also the Zataka Park, as opposed to putting it in a con uh, private hands or in a contract of hands, which would be more expensive for us. We attempted to uh, appear before CPA to see if we can get some money to do some studies for the commons, but uh, that... Uh, we weren't, we didn't have the opportunity, so there is that there is no money coming in that direction. So that's the more. Um, we have um, on that same list, we have uh, the road and road and sidewalks. Roads and sidewalks. We are asking for hundred thousand. Um, many people have been talking to us, and I'm sure some that have come to the committee members. But I definitely, many have come to the select board uh, asking why we are not doing sidewalks or why we are not fixing sidewalks or even uh, remodeling new, uh, the existing sidewalks. And uh, the way our current budget is structured, we don't have a line item for roads and sidewalks. And we have a couple of sidewalks that we would like to fix. We also have a couple of areas we would like to put a new sidewalk. For example, near to the elementary school, a um, couple of times they've been talking about we put in sidewalks between Rocky Hill and the school, and a couple of individuals uh, complaining that when they are bringing their kids to school, they, there's no place to. And we've told them that we don't have funding for sidewalk. So we are trying to see if the town can give us some money to to in this uh, FY21 season to begin a uh, sidewalk program, even as little as it may be, or at least we have a sense of doing sidewalks. That's, that's the 100,000. The VAC truck, this is a big equipment that uh, is a very, it's a major uh, equipment for the DPW wastewater, water, and also storm drain. What this truck does, it helps us to take care of um, water main bricks, uh, the pumps, the, uh, sump, uh, the uh, sewer pump stations, uh, drainage issues. The, before uh, my arrival to the town, the town voted for a 100,000 100, article for a water, a water truck, wastewater truck. And then when I came on board, we the town also gave us under forty thousand to add to that hundred thousand to get a wastewater truck. But I didn't spend the money. I spoke to the town administrator and the select board that if they can give us a vac truck, the town will be more beneficial with a vac truck than a wastewater a tanker. When we buy a tanker, it's very expensive to maintain based on our structure. For example. If we get a water tanker or a wastewater tanker to haul our sludge or wastewater to any location, in this case, currently we are hauling to Lowe's, it will 
Oh, we need a, a, a driver with a Class A driver's license and a couple of other endorsements. We will need a, a mechanic that can um, take care of that uh, water tanker. Plus, we the water tanker, most of the time, will be sitting down idly in the garage. We can't use it because of its nature. So I suggested to the town, to the select board and the town administrator that if the 140000 that we have right now, we can use that as a down payment. Uh, in other words, and then the VAC truck has a camera. And the, yours, the total amount is about 600000 And I, I suggested that we should get money from the town in a three-year cycle that, so that we'll be able to, because we have an age, uh, an existing one we're using right now is is old. We've put a lot of money in it. it. We still think we can still have about a year or two in that VAC truck. And so this way, the money will be divided into the three divisions, where water, wastewater, and the general government, the Quich Highway, will pay for that truck. Out of that 600000 plus, we the town will allow us to use the 140000 that we have right now as part of that money. Now, it sounds very high in terms of 600000 but the truck is a, is, is, is a workhorse for public works and utilities. Right now, we, we, have, we have contractors coming to help us annually to clean our pipes, do the camera of our pipes, help us to do some work on the, pumps, uh, some, on the sewer pump stations. And if we have a water main break, which we've had a couple of them recently, we have to rent uh, a back truck or from a vendor. Um, so that's why we are requesting for this truck. We also have uh, the double drum ro uh, roller. The double drum roller, in the name sounds, uh, that's uh, one of the uh, professional names they call it, but, but the simple name for this is the roller, the compactor. We, by the nature of our job as highway department, we have to maintain the roads, we have to fill the pothole, we have to uh, pave the, do minor paving. We don't have a good compactor to do the work right now. The one we have is been from the 1980s and no more parts. It doesn't have enough compaction to compact the asphalt. And so we, that's why, and this also came up in the four town meeting, which was voted down also. So as a department of public works, by the nature of our job, it's a, one of our major equipment that we need to fix our roads. That's the that's the that's the, the double drum roller. The ditch cleaning, as uh, we've all seen, I know the, the town was very gracious to us. They gave us some money uh, in the last uh, another meeting, and uh, we've been, in my view, uh, we've been able to uh, at least uh, prove uh, utilize the money wisely and. Today, I can, I can um, proudly say that um, the ditches um, all over the town are better than what we inherited a year ago. And um, we want to continue that process. And that's why we're asking for additional funding. Um, it will be, in my view, and in the view of public works, it will be, it will be something that the town should not allow the ditches to go back to where it was in the past, over 20 years, 30 years, no maintenance. Uh, and that's, uh, it has cost us huge money right now. Uh, we think that uh, annual maintenance, not only it will enhance the flow of uh, our um, drainage system in town because the ditches are basically our main drainage system in town. It will also reduce uh, pollution. It will also, it will also won't take us back to the um, 20 years, 30 years event. So that's why we're asking for continuation of uh, ditch funding. We're also asking for one ton truck. The one ton truck we're asking is very important to us because um, we have a building maintenance division. Uh, right now, we'll, we, 
Last year, I requested for personnel and a truck. Uh, the building maintenance division takes care of the town buildings, takes care of the cemetery. And also the select board, as I said earlier, has given us maintenance of uh, Zotaka Park. So the building maintenance division takes, will be taking care of the parks, the cemeteries, and the town buildings. And as we all know, the town buildings are increasing exponentially because of uh, the three major buildings that is being built at this point. And um, based on my understanding, uh, one or two of those new buildings should be coming up for uh, opening, uh, opening the um, within the next few weeks or few months before. So we don't want the town buildings to go again, be like the ditches, because uh, we've had history here where town buildings weren't maintained properly in the past. And under my under my watch, given the opportunity to serve. I don't want that thing to repeat itself. So we're asking for one ton truck, and uh, it will help us to maintain, do the landscaping, carry equipment to maintain the town buildings, the landscaping that requires in these current surrounding town buildings, also the cemeteries and uh, the parks. So that's what uh, we are requesting that truck for. for so that we'll be able to meet the obligations. The six wheel truck with plow, we have a current one, which is a 10 wheeler, but it's already, it's over almost 15 years old. It's very expensive to put parts and is the horse truck for our snow plowing. It has a wing plow. It is, we put that truck on the main routes of the town. And so we need urgently a new truck. We we were kind of blessed in the sense of this snow season uh, that uh, we didn't have major snowstorm. Most of the snowstorm we had, we were able to use other smaller trucks. This, uh, but I'm not requesting for a 10 wheel, I'm requesting for six. I think six will still do the same, the, the same work that we have right now. The reason why 10 wheel I was bought over 10, 15 years ago was um, partly for snow, partly to haul materials. But we have other trucks here we can use. So that's that's what that six. And that is number one of my priority, uh, capital priority, because it's an emergency vehicle. Um, when we cannot guarantee every snow season will be like the one we have this season. So I, um, I've also discussed that with the, with the town administrator. The dike is a major one, but um, we are also uh, working on see if we can get grants, the um, MVP grant. But um, we need money for the grant for the dike. It's a major um, safety net for the town, and uh, we don't want the issues of um, flooding or some areas of the dike need minus maintenance. So based on our engineers and um, experts, uh, that's how we came up with that 200,000. The town is also looking for, we're going through the process of uh, qualifying for a, for grant for, see if, so that uh, the DAC issue is on the two, two way tracks. If, if we can get a grant or the town can give us some money to take care of the, of the DAC. The pump station at DPW, the twenty-five thousand we're asking for is to upgrade uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, um, and things, uh, some of the pipes uh, because we had a few they are aged, and so we have uh, people repairing them. Some of the parts are not easily found, but uh, we are putting twenty-five thousand for repairs of the the pump, and that pump serves. Uh, all the town and vehicles, including police, fire, school. The camera gear, which is 10,000, is also part of the VAC truck. If we don't have the VAC truck, there will not be need for the camera. Yeah. The sewer lining and repairs, which is 250, that comes from a sewer cover, but it's a capital project. We have to, there are many, we have cleaned some pipes right now. 
we are thinking of putting them, putting some liner in some of our pipes because of leakages. And uh, we have to minimize uh, what we call um, I and I. We will have to minimize groundwater getting into our sewer pipes. First of all, apart from our annual report or monthly report to Department of Environmental Protection, we also don't want to uh, any major uh, failure in our in our sewer pipes. So, so there are some areas we cannot dig down to replace the new pipes, but we can, due to technology, put some sleeves some to patch the existing pipes. And so that 250 we're asking is a capital project for to realign some of our major pipes and also especially on Route 9 on Middle Street and areas highly traffic high traffic areas. The sewer mount hole investigation and cleaning, the 30,000 is what we we do every year, bringing a company with a vac truck to help us uh, flush and clean our system. That's for and then and then in terms of water, we have we need a water a hydrants. We have a couple of areas in town that uh, we need to replace the hydrate uh, hydrants. Sorry, uh, partly we have also or some areas where the current hydrants does not meet the current pressure, so we need to replace them. We also need to install some in some uh, dead end areas. So that's why we're asking for sixty five thousand for. The water tank fence, we're asking for 65 for water tank fences. The DEP has re requested that we should fence our water tanks. Um, we're also thinking that uh, as time goes on, we might, uh, that we might come before the finance coming for a bigger money for camera. Our water, since the 9-11, various, uh, uh, and also various towns and municipalities and utilities uh, have been asked to put some security around their water tanks because it's a sitting duck. It's a major issue. And so you see some towns or some, they have overhead tanks. But in the case of ours, we have uh, tanks in the woods and uh, they are out of sight. They are in, in areas where people walk in trails in the woods. So DEP is recommended that at, at a minimum we should put a fence around the tanks. That's what that uh, money is for. And um, then I, we also have a big major issue on South Maple. This has been an issue for for years now. In the area of South Maple, there is no water pressure. We've been very grateful, we've been very blessed that uh, most of them are um, farm fields. We don't have pressure for fire. We don't have pressure for water. And the water in that area, every so often we get a call, it's yellow, it's black, it's dark. I have a picture which I was thinking of showing um, the committee when I have opportunity to meet with the committee before these incidents of today. So all the pipes there are tobacco-related pipes. And so we understand that it will be difficult to fix the whole thing at once. So we have a 850,000 here for South Maple's water main replacement, but we 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 are asking the committee to give us a three to five year budget to begin the process to begin to change the pipes, bring enough pressure there, and also so that the people can begin to see that we are doing something on. The air of South Maple is in a very bad shape. So the water valve replacements are just uh, regular replacements of water valves on main on most of our main roads. The valves are old. They are some of them are, are no longer able to work. So we frequently has to annually ask for money to replace some of them. So these are the um, current. Uh, uh, request for capital. In terms of, uh, I'm sorry, before I go to operating, I don't know if you have any question or. I don't have any questions right now. I mean, I think we may down the road, but this was a good 
overview of everything. Thank you, Chris. I think that um, a lot of it too, you will have to wait to see um, how it goes with the Capital Planning Committee. Yes, I, I, we, I was with, I, I, don't, I think, I don't know when they will be coming next, but the last time it was postponed due to all these, due to the emergencies in place, yeah. Yes, but it's good to, uh, we will put recommendations in uh, before uh, this goes to town meeting. So thank you for the overview on all this. Thank you very much. In terms of the operating budget, uh, is this getting level, a level funded? except that we asking for three custodial staff, three custodial staffs, which they will be part-time, they will not be, they will not be 40, we're not recommending for 40 hours or 30 hours. The three custodial staffs will help us because with, the, with this uh, three new buildings in construction, town hall, the, the uh, safety complex, um, the Goodwin Memorial Library. Um, we have a lot of buildings that we need to maintain, and uh, we need personnel to maintain. And in, from in a, from our own perspective, we think it will be easy, it will be cheaper for the town to give us personnel as opposed to we bringing in contractor to maintain these buildings. Uh, we in our in our research, uh, it's more expensive to get a contractor, especially the fact that uh, the council and agent, their schedule is such that uh, uh, it, the traffic there, whereby um, some some days they may open from maybe nine or ten in the morning till about eight or seven, and in anything you do with contractor, um, it's always money. But these individuals, not only they will clean, but they will also take care of landscaping. And where necessary, they will take care of the snow and ice in the area. So we we have so that's so that's uh, the thing in our operating budget that is. Otherwise, the rest are level funded. Um, okay, so so just to make sure I understand, you're looking for, did you say three people? Yeah, three custodial staff uh, for their part timers, um, maximum of nineteen hours or less. We we they they will not work. Um, they will not be they will not be benefits. Uh, so even if they have to, for some reason there's an emergency and we have to keep somebody, they they will. It's not uh, um, a union position. It's not um, we're not advocating union position, and it's not uh, a. We think that uh, if we get uh, custodial staff, their job is to take care of these buildings, and we have to stagger their schedule because uh, council and agent, uh, we uh, we know that that and the library uh, stays open, so it's not a it's not a seven to three schedule, and then based on what our research from other towns, we felt that. It'd be cheaper to get it. Um, we're requesting for three. You know, I, if we are able to get it three or two, that would be easier for us to maintain these new buildings. We also will be um, getting some money from um, the fire and probably council agent. Uh, I'm sure when they come before you, they probably will uh, expatiate on that. And uh, we need to buy some cleaning equipment. I think some of those, uh, either the fire, either the fire department or the council and agent, uh, that may be in their budget. We need to buy some um, cleaning equipment to clean these uh, new buildings and um, maintain the type of um, materials that is uh, is um, is used to build to put these new buildings up to date. So those are the type of things uh, that. Uh, we are, why we are asking for personnel, yes. So is that in the line item that is listed for 35, an extra $35,000, is that where that is? Yes, correct. I have a question. Sure. How did we take care of the old buildings? The old, the old buildings in the case right now, we are not doing a good job at it, in my view, uh, because uh, for example, the town hall is the seat of government. 
We have a lady who comes in to clean the town hall. We have uh, Gary Burns, which is the only one man in building maintenance. He does the major repairs there, or he brings in, will bring in contractor to do a lot of things. But in terms of the cleaning of the of the town hall, uh, we have a lady who comes in probably two or three times a week. Uh, in my view, that is not the best way to take care of uh, the town hall and these three new buildings and uh, the current uh, um, Goodwin Memorial and also the safety complex. So we didn't have anybody to take care of the old uh, Hooker School and library? The library, this same lady that I just said is the one who goes there too, probably once or twice a week. Um, but for the the and then we have um, we have uh, the fire chief also has a volunteer who who helps and uh, also at the complex and so most of the time the best practice is not followed because we don't have enough uh, personnel and equipment to do a good job. The lady who does the town hall is a one man one personnel show and she is doing her best. But for example, recently, with uh, the public health emergency that we, ha we are under right now, she's not able to walk because it has, for, it has, for a couple of times she has used um, a lot of uh, cleaning agents, disinfectants, uh, and that is affecting her. And she's been, and I, I was just told yesterday that she'll be out for another three weeks. So basically, this morning I was talking to the town administrator. How do we clean town hall? Town hall is not a place where we can say we can clean it for three weeks or the safety Isn't complex. Isn't it closed now? Yeah. Isn't it closed now, though? And the town hall is officially closed to the public, but we have uh, public servants who are there. We have town officials there. It's closed to the public, but we still have the, 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 the but it's still open to town officials. There are the there are a couple of individuals in rotation. I think uh, the town administrator may, I don't know if he's on the line, he may be able to help me better on this, but we have people working in Tahoe. Yeah, so there are certain people who have to be there every day uh, or certain offices that have to be open every day. Most people are working remotely. Uh, I'm there every day. The clerk is there every day. Um, the assessor comes in every other day. The town collector's office is open every day, but they rotate the people. Same with, with human resources. And the building inspector is open half the time. Um, most people are working remotely uh, and keeping uh, government business moving forward. We also believe that um, the emergency that we are in right now is not going to be, a, 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 hopefully it won't be a long-term issue. But when things come back to normal, we are the public, we come in and uh, the public business will continue. Uh, the library will be very active. The town hall will be very active. The council and agent will be very active. The safety complex will be very active. And so it requires uh, upkeep in our view. Okay. Well, uh, if you want, did you want to go uh, over anything else, Chris? I, there's a few other items on here on your budget that have uh, some, some, you know, some good increases. There's one here for $14,000. Looks like uh, vegetation management or something like that. It, that's a, uh, that's a tree. That's a tree. Three uh, three walks. We um, we have a, we the town. Uh, I'm proud to say the town uh, tree shed committee is back in in business, and uh, we need uh, that money to buy some some tree uh, equipment. So for example, we have a couple of chainsaws, but we we need to replace those chainsaws. That's what that's that's what that is. We have um, we don't have much money to coming to do a lot of uh, tree uh, pruning or cutting or, or, or removal. As you see, many of our 
town trees are aged trees. Uh, we hope to come before this committee in the future to address this issue where we have all these aged trees. Many of them need to be pruned. Some need to be removed. We need to re do replanting and a couple of other assessments, which uh, for now, we just taking it one at a time based on how the hazard, how dangerous it is in terms of location or, or, or things like that. Yes. Are these trees on uh, public property or private? Oh, no, we, we don't deal with private trees. We do public trees. Uh, all the, as a town, all the trees on public right of way is what we deal with. All public, all public trees, both, both on on the roadside, parks, conservation land, things like that. I've seen up and down Route 47 uh, the last few weeks. Uh, them doing tree work was that part of this? No, that's uh, Eversource. Um, that's a contractor for Eversource. They're doing um, they annual, annually they do some tree tree work along the power lines. So that's uh, what. You saw on 47, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the uh, next thing that's a little bit uh, larger, if you want to uh, discuss maybe uh, uh, the public works supplies went up uh, quite a bit. Yes, because of um, these are the new buildings that will come in and also uh, Zaitaka Park. So that's why I do the supplies went up. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, here's one more thing I want. I missed. Uh, how about you mentioned uh, the police details? Yes. Police detail goes up based on um, the amount police gives us uh, in terms of their rate. Um, so we, if you look at, uh, we've been very busy even in the past year or so with a lot of constructions and also um, a lot of uh, repairs, road repairs, water main breaks, sewer problems. So we are required to get details. So, so that's, can you tell me that it's just increased because of the rate? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone else has any questions. Okay, did you want to keep, uh, unless David, you have anything to add, I guess you could keep going, uh, going through the rest of the items, such as the, we can go right over to snow and ice. And snow and ice is usually, uh, uh, if you look at snow and ice, we, it's very difficult to, to tell us, except we, 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 we buy some materials. And uh, those materials we buy for snow and ice is also just like as we talked, we said about the police details. We the rate for salt or for fuel goes up based on bidding process. Uh, we are uh, we based on this emergency. We uh, we we hope and we pray uh, fuel and diesel price may come down, but it is too early for us to know. Uh, the issue of salt is also not in our control. It depends on uh, what the bidding process will get us in the market. But because we are part of um, a group, the Franklin County of, um, form of government, we have, so we are in a bigger pool. So, we, so whatever we get will always give us a better rate as opposed to if we go out ourselves as a hardly, ton of hardly because of quantity. So, 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 so snow is, is usually something at this point it would be difficult for me to say, um, but based on experience, we're always negative because of mother nature. Like like last night, we used a lot of salt and uh, we stayed a lot of, uh, we put in a lot of hours. Uh, the forecast told us there would be rain, but the rain did not come forever. So we had to, and we're also blessed because in a, in a way, for lack of a better word, that school wasn't in session. If school were to be in session, or a lot of people were on the road, these, the way the storm came in yesterday could have been more difficult also for us. So it 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 so so snow and ice takes a lot of 
because it takes money because of labor and also materials. Okay, if you uh, maybe we can move on to the uh, next item then, street lighting. Uh, street lighting, we um, it's also uh, in terms of uh, the rate from um, Eversource. Um, it's also the select board is also looking at. Uh, I think Dave will be able to speak more on this too. The select board is also looking at how uh, the whole street light. Uh, do we manage it ourselves? Do we change to um, um, LED uh, from where we are now to color and to green bulbs or LED bulbs? And um, and so it's been a it's still an ongoing discussion with the select board. And, but uh, in terms of where we are today, um, our street lights takes a lot of energy. And um, I would defer to Dave, Dave Nixon to be able to probably add more to that. I don't know, Dave, if you're hearing us, um, if you can add or say something. Okay. Uh, take, took me off and unmoved. I, I'm um, sorry. It, it is street, the street lights. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you heard I, my comments. I, yeah. I heard, I couldn't say. Okay. Um, okay, so streetlights, um, we were looking at a 10 increase in energy and we were able to negotiate a 10% decrease in energy. So we were able to save a couple of dollars on streetlights. In general, we have uh, we have about 400 streetlights in town of Hadley. We have looked at the possibility of uh, buying them for our, uh, for our own use purposes and exchanging them with LED. Uh, but if you look at the total budget, even if we achieved a 50% savings, we're still only talking about $10,000 in annual savings. And that would be more than dwarfed by the capital investment that it would take uh, for us to uh, own our own street lights. So it's a project that we've looked at, we've never done because we've had so many other big projects that we need to pay attention to. And this just didn't seem to have the rate of return to make it worth our while. Okay, I don't have any other questions on any of that. Maybe we can move, unless someone else does, I would say let's move over to uh, cemeteries. Sure. What? Sure. Uh, go ahead. Um, Seven three. The in terms of from our perspective, uh, it's working out very well. Because if you recall, about a year ago, we went before the select board to re to re uh, constitute the way cemetery should be run, and so the board and the town me town meeting put the cemetery under public works. So we um we are very well administering the cemetery we have uh, and it's under the building maintenance and uh, Gary Burns is the foreman for that and he's also the in charge of cemetery now we requested yeah, about a year ago we requested to the, the board to give us um, an employee uh, and a, a labor with uh, to join Gary so that we can have a, a staff the board was not able to give us a labor the board allowed us to hire a contractor, and uh, the board said they would like to re revisit it this summit, this this annual um, budget FY21, and so it's part of that. Um, it's part of that uh, again staffing that we are requesting for, where we have at the time we requested for this staff about a year ago. We didn't think about this, the new buildings and how, so now the new buildings have added more urgency to we getting the one ton truck and the uh, um, staffing so that, uh, because the cemeteries we have, they need to be cleaned more. We need to be able to do barrier. We also need to be able to do um, la landscaping and the beautifications. So, So, so that's what we're asking for. I have, for, for I have that. a question, Chris. So that you're saying that fourteen thousand is going to give you another employee? No, the fourteen thousand we give us, uh, we will be used to get uh, um, more in equipment, like uh, we like uh, weed whacker and uh, some other um, um, grass seeds, 
And uh, we're going to use some of the highway equipment we have right now to do the big work. But we need uh, 14,000 to buy some equipment. We need a, a, um, to the, bar the barrier container we use right now, the, 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 the board is, we need to change that board. We need to get some weed worker. We need to get some seeds and some other um, verification equipment. That's why we asked for the 14,000. So maybe David can answer this question. Why do we have 14,000 under salaries? I'm sorry? We have the $14,000 increase, but it's under the salaries. The, so the 100 salary increase has to do with the staff for, for cemetery and buildings and grants. We, I, as I said earlier, we, we need, um, that is part of the salary. There are also part of that individual salary is on is in the highway because the individual is going to plow snow for us. Is going to the individual is going to um, um, do some um, highway work when cemetery is closed. So what we did was uh, we put some money, including including that of um, that of Gary. We put some money in, in cemetery, some money in buildings and grants, and some money in highway. So that's what, yeah. Hello. Oh, sorry. I think I'm sorry. I don't know if you heard me. I heard you. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. I guess we keep going. Uh, I'm sorry. Wait. I don't know. I said no, I, I, you asked me about the fourteen thousand, so I'm trying to explain uh, how we. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. I have a question. Was the one ton truck relating to the new buildings how for landscaping? Is that what you were saying? The one-ton truck will cover both uh, the new buildings, a cemetery, and also uh, the existing buildings. Well, what do it's you all... need one-ton truck for for the buildings? What do I need one-ton truck? Yeah, for, I mean, what what would it do for the buildings? Yeah, right now we we don't have it. will help us to move uh, the cleaning machines from one building to the next. We also help us to do landscaping. We, we need the, when we want to uh, loom and seed. The one-ton truck will also help us to plow the parking lots of the new buildings. And they also, we, the one-ton truck will help us to carry load for cemetery and also the Taka Park. So chainsaws, uh, building equipment, and if we have to carry a big, um, for example, if we need to use a mini, mini excavator, uh, the one-ton truck will help us to, with the trailer, to trailer it from garage, have a garage to the location. Okay. So we need it. So yes. Do we have any one-ton trucks currently, or anything similar? We 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 do, but it's for highway. So highway is operating, and building building uh, buildings building uh, and the grounds can accept uh, most of the time the highway trucks are on the road. So we cannot rely that highway will help us when we need to do other functions. Now highway will help every so often, especially with uh, the mini excavator or the uh, skids. Because we don't use the skids every day, we don't use the mini skids every day. So, so the and then the um, the more that we are requesting for needs to be carried from the highway garage to either the cemetery or to now we have the park. The park is additional to our our, our obligation now. So and then the new buildings we have uh, the either the building either this council agent or the fire chief will be discussing with you guys on the equipment. We're gonna buy some cleaning equipment. They're heavy to carry. We cannot carry them on without a truck. So one-ton truck is, and that one-ton truck will also help us during the winter months. Uh, we'll put that truck on the road. So, so it's gonna be a busy truck. So, yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so um, if uh, we want to keep going, let's uh, go over to the water and sewer. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, go ahead. I didn't uh, water and sewer. Um, you have a question? I will. I will be, I will, <laughs> I'm glad to answer it. So, sorry, Chris. I don't have any questions regarding it right right now. I just figured if you wanted to say something, I would, and then I, I would just normally go down the list of anything that is like a large increase. If you could 
you know, just mention why you needed to have yeah. The the large increase came in the capital, if you recall, I mentioned earlier, but I don't know if you want me to explain more. For example, the the uh, the two hundred fifty thousand for sewer uh, pipelining of the of the pipes, which is a major capital expenditure to our pipes, our age old pipes. We need to we we clean them annually, which is the thirty thousand, the thirty thousand, which is which uh, we normally request annually. It's also in the capital. But uh, we have some leakages we want to close, and um, putting a sleeve or putting a is cheaper than digging the whole road to go down as and bring out huge pipes. So that's the two fifty we're requesting for. Now we the water the in terms of water the big project which it depends on this the finance committee and the select board. Uh, our, our, uh, from our perspective, we're asking for a three to five year plan to focus on South Maple area because there is no pressure there and the, the pipes are the already aged. They are tuberculated pipes. That means that they, they are corroded. I even the, when we flush, people complain the yellow water, red, pink water, things like that. And the fire department also complains there's not enough pressure. God forbid there's a couple of big emergencies in that area. So these are the type of those are the that's that's the eight hundred and fifty thousand. But we know that uh, we are not anticipating that the town will give us eight hundred and fifty, but we're asking for a three to five year pro program where uh, annually we can based on whatever amount the town will give us, we begin at least in my view from we start we start the we start the journey uh, at least uh, we st and people can see that we had we begin to do something just like the town gave us money for the ditches and we have started maintaining the ditches the public is seeing that and so we those are those are the things that we have the other big projects for water and sewer i think uh, it'll be coming to the finance committee i'm sure david will be able to speak to it uh, but it's not this year is the route nine project with the state uh, project which We'll be also be upgrading um, water main and sewer main on that, uh, but that will be a diff that's on a different uh, schedule. It's not on this uh, FY21 budget. So I was more looking at some of it, like um, on the water side, you have an increase um, for salaries, and it, it went up by uh, twenty six thousand dollars. Are you adding someone to the water? No, the, the town uh, we we have somebody already added to the water. We have the label. That's that's why that's why it went increase. The water we uh, last year DEP came to do inspection, and uh, both water and sewer, and they went after us for staffing, minimum staffing, and uh, we came up with a creative way to meet their their challenge, uh, because uh, and uh, one of the creative ways we we came up was we got a we 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 went before the select board we were requesting for two labels and one general foreman but the, but the board approved one label for us so we and a, a general foreman so that and then we added the people like myself Scott which is the which is the uh, field superintendent uh, Sharon and a couple of other highway guys as backup for water and sewer so on our paper to DEP, he kind of met their requirements. So that's how we got the label we had uh, to join water. So we have four four employees in water right now, as opposed to three. We still have three in sewer, but when you add uh, the general foreman, is going to be there for sewer and water, and uh, also people like me, uh, Scott, and a couple of highway guys. We are there as backup, so that fulfills some. At least it bought us some time from because any time the DP shows up in to do inspection, not to lane hardly, but any water utility or wastewater, there's always uh, you don't know what they're going to find. Well, in our case, we are very grateful they didn't go after the town to make it difficult for us, and they uh, so we so that's how we got that labor. Okay, thank you.
Chris, are any of those um, increases in salaries like, uh, related to the union contracts? Yes. Yes, the uh, the um, the union contract, uh, which uh, we also had the the increase in union contract. Yes. Okay, so I don't have any questions at this time. If anyone else would like to, add. I have a question. Sure. The South Maple Street water issue. How many houses are affected by that? Do you have any idea? I don't have an idea. The only thing that I can say is that uh, most of those areas are farmlands, so a lot of farmers are affected um, in terms of the houses compared to to areas like uh, um, North Maple. South Maple is um, houses are uh, in terms of houses are less, but we have people there. We have farmland. We have a couple of houses, and then. Uh, he stretches up to Moody Bridge area, which in Moody Bridge will have a lot of houses there. So that's just why we we are thinking that if we can go a three to five year program, uh, we'll begin to take it one at a time. And um, we, should, we should be able to meet those needs. And before it gets to a point where there's a major disaster and the fire, fire department cannot get pressure to get water. It becomes a big political and public relations nightmare. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, Chris. Thank you for for everything and for presenting uh, to us. Um, still getting kind of used to how this kind of works with the Zoom, so it feels kind of weird, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be that's true because I was I was looking forward to uh, face to face where I can and uh, do my better pr presentation, but I apologize in in this kind of this discussion. I, I I I didn't have ability to show you charts or or pictures, for example, like this South Maple, um, how it looks currently. Yeah. Chris, Hello. can I can I ask a question? Just with, yeah. with some of the equipment that we're buying or that you'd like to buy, some of it's going to sit idle part of the year. I mean, rollers, things like that. Do any uh, of the I'm other sorry. town? Do I'm sorry. Uh, which None of our equipment to sit idle the rest of the year. We try to make sure we use them 12 months in a year. Okay, but a double roller you can only use during paving season, right? Yeah, the, the roller is the only one and the, and the, the more, yes, okay. because uh, we cannot uh, – but. We once in a while we may use it during the winter months. Now that we have hot box, the time, if you okay. recall the time gave, yeah. So we are able to produce our asphalt. So and okay. it's very helpful for us in, in, in this winter. We don't have to use coal patch things like that. Okay. Yeah. So is there is there any ability with some of the smaller towns around us to share equipment? You know, group purchasing and the. the um, the, my experience in a group purchasing is good, especially in the area where we have like salt. We do group purchasing right now, fuel, things like that. Because if we begin to do group, uh, group in terms of equipment, it will uh, become a problem for maintenance and repairs. Some town will say, okay, you use it 10 times, I use it only five times, why should I pay for? And it becomes some political mess. So many towns, what group does is usually items that, uh, we can put together a big volume and purchase, and then you take yours, I take mine, and okay. it's been working that way. Another, thing, another, way, another place where a group may be able to work would be if we, if we have a manpower, and then it's okay, um, based on salary, the different groups can share the, the, that manpower. But in terms of equipment, I, I don't think it'd be a good place to, to, to go. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have another question uh, that just that uh, Paul made me think of. Uh, the, on the equipment, you said there was a uh, hundred and forty thousand dollars that we have that is pending from um, before you um, were hired. David, can you tell us where that is? Is that in one of our other buckets? It's in the bucket called sewer impact fees. Um, 
So we appropriated 100,000 and an additional 40,000 with the idea that we would basically build the uh, sewer uh, tanker truck. Um, that um, turned out not to be practical. The vendor with that won the bid clearly didn't know what they were doing. Uh, so we canceled the deal. So we should either apply that money for something similar or we should return that money back to the pot. Chris is suggesting we apply it to as a down payment on the uh, Vector truck. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that you wanted to add, Chris? Uh, no, I just want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to come to explain myself on behalf of the department. Thank you very much. Uh, David, you. is yes. there anything else that you would like to add? Yeah, there are a couple of things, if I could. Um, uh, the first is, is that I intend to um, plan for a, um, a May 7th town meeting uh, until we make that formal change. Um, I would like to continue with the agreed upon schedule in order to minimize the uncertainty and disruption to all of your lives. So if we could keep on track, if that's not working for you, please let me know and I will, um, I will work with you to come up with a better schedule. But if we could maintain this current pace, we'll have things at least reviewed by the uh, middle of April. And uh, you know, if we have to adjust the budget based upon the very certain impact upon the local economy that COVID-19 is having, then we can, um, we can make those decisions later. Uh, but at least you'll have heard all the budget presentations. Uh, is that agreeable with everybody? Am I on the right track here? Yes. Good for me. Yes. Yep. All right, thank you. Uh, the other thing is uh, I'd like to put on your radar either we can take it up now or you can defer it if you wish. Um, you know, sadly, things uh, do come to an end and my 15 years going to be 16 year run with the town of Hadley is coming to a conclusion. Uh, this, uh, we need to find a replacement town administrator. The select board would like to have that new person in place by July or August at the latest so that there's a seamless transition given everything that's going on. Um, to that end, they, they want to hire an outfit out of Meredith, New Hampshire called Municipal Resources Incorporated. They've done a lot of work in the Commonwealth. They've done work for the town of Hadley before. Uh, so the select board are gonna ask for a transfer from the reserve fund for $9,800 so that we can take care of that um, recruitment to get the best person in and get them in and, and so that we can have that overlap so that we have a smooth transition from one town administrator to the next. So the plan would be to have a new person in August 15th at the latest. I would uh, take a, a, a cubicle somewhere, work on special projects and that person would be the go-to person and learn the ropes and have me as a resource person. That's the overall plan. That sounds like a good plan, David. Thank you. We're gonna miss you. I, guess I live in Greenfield, I'm in the book. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound like a good plan. Uh, I was thinking, you know, just to throw, that um, since you will be there the extra uh, time to help out um, and we, we can discuss this a little more later too but our HR person will be out of the area right does he leave on the in July or June sometime during the summer he, he's going to be leaving um, and uh, we have reached out to a uh, 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 a, a professional by the name of Deborah Radway, and she is the former human resources director for the town of Amherst, former town administrator for the town of Montague. So she understands larger uh, communities and smaller communities. Uh, very well experienced. She's retired. She's looking for a couple of hours per week 
Um, and, uh, you know, obviously this is a decision that the select board gets to make, not me. Um, but it sounds like that she's ready to step in and support the town for the time when uh, Ed O'Connor is in active deployment. Uh, and we have that budget in place since we're not going to be paying him. We can apply that uh, that salary to to her uh, to her services. But uh, she comes with tons of experience, um, and uh, so we have a plan. If uh, the town wants to go through a formal uh, uh, vetting process, we certainly are willing to do that. Well, I thought uh, not necessarily a formal process, but I thought it was fabulous that you might be there a little extra so you could help out in that field. I could do that, but I'd be making it up as I go along. So, you know, it'd be the best to have a professional, but if that's what you need me to do, that's what I'm prepared to offer. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I would like to, um, uh, keep going with this, with just meeting all the departments, like you said, and listening to everyone. And then uh, we do have quite a bit of work ahead of us to figure out to get back to a balanced budget afterwards with discussing everything that's happening with our economy. I agree. Yeah. We'll have to have a separate meeting for that. Uh, also, we'll need to um, read the select board. We were supposed to meet with them on the last Wednesday, I think it was, and I, that got pushed off. So we'll have to figure out a time to meet with them. So uh, I expect a lot more uh, turmoil and uncertainty in our lives. Uh, we'll try to put keep things moving forward as best we can. Uh, we do have, as I said, uh, a unified command that meets daily and uh, publishes a uh, situation report uh, on www.hadleyma.org. So that has a lot of resources for people, a lot of information, a lot of uh, good good information to know so that you get a sense of where we are. Um, we've reposted a lot of the important documents, including the governor's most recent order uh, closing uh, non-essential businesses. Um, and I will, at a calmer time, I will start reworking the FY21 budget, looking at a very likely decline in revenues and trying to figure out what we need to do to uh, balance that budget. David, who is on that committee? That committee is consists of um, the emergency management director, who uh, also is the fire chief, Michael Spanknable. A mm -hmm. uh, member of the board of selectmen, Chair Christian Stanley, um, myself as town administrator and public information officer, and then we have a member from the board of health, typically Emma Dragon. Mm -hmm. That's the core unified command. It can also be, ex be expanded to include Ann McKenzie, superintendent of schools, mm -hmm. and um, Chief Mason, chief of police. Okay, thank you. I've been enjoying the reports that I get daily from them, or almost daily, from you all. Are they helpful, Valerie? Um, I find them comforting that, that there's a group in the town who's paying attention, meeting regularly, and letting us all in on what's, what's going down. Yes, I find it very helpful. Thank you. Yes, thank you for that feedback. If if you find that we're lacking, do let me know. Okay, thanks. Uh, when you're doing the budget over, uh, David, I, I, in my opinion, I kind of, th this is my thought, I, I would like to see possibly an increase in the, um, the finance reserve fund. Uh, I, I, in my opinion, I would like to not do the 75,000 to uh, regarding the um, retirement at this time, I would like not to do the $25,000 to the um, unemployment at this time. And I would like to take that $100,000 and apply it to the finance um, reserve for any emergencies. So that way it is, you know, 
I just feel like there's things that are going to pop up and we're going to, you know, I'd rather be able to move it um, if we need to, um, to somewhere else. If we don't need to move it and we can fund those other projects, that would be great. But that's, that, that is my opinion is where I was thinking, um, but I'd like to see if anybody else has any opinion. And then also, um, I just wanted to give you my thought when you're looking at the budget. Okay, thank you. So it sounds like uh, you want to move that uh, 50,000 Finance Committee Reserve Fund to 150,000 by taking 25,000 from un unemployment and 75,000 for the pension unfunded liability. I might negotiate with you on the uh, unemployment since I think we might get hit pretty hard this year, but I, I, I like the, uh, the idea of increasing the reserve fund. I do too. I, I support that also. All right. I've always looked at the reserve fund as a percentage of the budget. And when you're talking about a $20 million budget and your cushion is 50,000, that's not much of a percentage. Mm -hmm. It's more of the uncertainty of this time that we're in right now that I'd rather have it um, you know, well padded. And then um, even like if it was unemployment, I believe you could be right. But then if you are right and we need to do the unemployment, we always have the ability just to move it to the unemployment. Yeah. Um, all that. All right. Yep. Okay. This is helpful. Anything else? Uh, not at this time. Uh, I don't I have anything else. I have a question, and that is, um, are we expecting that people will um, have trouble paying their taxes? Uh, we're not just expecting it. We're, we're hearing it from the business community already. Okay. All right. Uh, let, me, let me grab my notes from today's meeting. Okay. Put them... All right, so we had the kickoff meeting. Uh, it'll happen every Tuesday at one o'clock. Um, the MMA has uh, put together a, next, a, um, a Zoom conference with uh, 250 town administrators across the Commonwealth. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, uh, Dr. La Larry Madoff and uh, Sean Cronin came on board to discuss uh, the executive branch's response to COVID-19, the epidemiological issues associated with the with the um, uh, the, the spread of the disease, and then Sean Cronin, uh, deputy director of the Division of Local Services, came in and talked about the pending legislation that uh, would help us out with uh, budgeting and town meeting. One of the issues is that they may uh, push back the due date for real estate bills back to June 1st. Um, if they do that, then that's uh, as opposed to April 1st. Um, if they do that, that may cause a cash flow issue in town halls. So Susan, Molly, Keegan, and I are going to sit down and work those numbers out. Um, and they may they may talk about a continuing resolution, uh, which would mean that they would extend into FY twenty one um, one twelfth of the FY twenty budget uh, with enhanced first month payments. So in the first month of any fiscal year, we do a lump sum payment to Hampshire retirement. We have the debt payment. We have contributions to various uh, benefits and, and uh, bulk pay, uh, payroll. Uh, and so on a $20 million budget, one twelfth of that would be absolutely swallowed up by one single payment alone for the, for the, uh, the pension. So they would have to add additional flexibility for the treasurers to be able to uh, manage their cash. So all of this is in the works. Uh, as soon as it gets passed, I'll provide you all with copies um, and we'll make our plans accordingly. 
Uh, so the lo the local businesses, to answer your question, Valerie, um, the hotel uh, companies uh, run by family members have approached me and said, is there any way that they can take, have some uh, tax relief? Um, and you know, it's not something that the town of Hadley can grant on its own. Uh, we would need uh, support from the from the uh, the state, and then we would also have to uh, make sure that we don't uh, starve ourselves for cash at the last part of the fiscal year. Yes. <sighs> and I've asked the library to uh, record all of this because this will be part of the Hadley's history. Um, that uh, this will be a chapter in our 350 plus years. Um, and uh, so we have librarians working on assembling the critical documents of every day's decision so that we will have a chronicle of this at the at the other end. Something good has to come from all of this. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so our next meeting, um, uh, oh, David, uh, when when have you rescheduled fire? Department. To yeah, so I think they're coming in on the thirty-first. Is it? Okay. Is that one of your meeting dates? Yes, I believe so. That's a meeting. Yeah, so they're coming in thirty-first. Everybody else should be on on target. Okay. And are you going to? That's at five. Sorry, is that that's at five thirty also? Yeah, they all start at five thirty, unless okay. you say otherwise. Oh, works for me. Much better. And uh, how about the Hadley Media, the TV? They we were. Are they going to be in? I wasn't sure if they were going to be meeting with us or not. They're 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 going to meet with you for your budgets. Okay. Uh, they're part of the five hundred uh, series budgets, uh, okay. which which is human services. Okay, great. I just happened to look down, and they're on page seventy five. They were the next one in line. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so if we don't have anything else, is if no one else has anything else to add, maybe we could um, just have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Discussion. Make sure you practice your social distancing, that you uh, do appropriate hand hygiene, and that uh, you cough or sneeze into a tissue or the crook of your elbow. And if you're feeling sick, stay home. Yeah, right on. And I just want to say thank you to Jennifer because she did a fabulous job on getting us yes. all up on here. Yes. Absolutely. I think that was all around. Thanks. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, everybody, then. Have a good night. Yeah. All right. Stay safe, good night. everybody. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Bye bye.